down that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I wanted to make now the uh, straight razor. Uh, you know, the idea popped in my head when I was uh, fooling around, you know, trying these hollow bevel dies. So, uh, you know, so I'm going to heat up right now this piece of D2. And, you know, just a quick point, this is going to be exponentially harder to work out, even though it's such a small piece. Um, you know, air hardening steels like D2 or H13 or, or S7, you know, the, the property that makes them so useful, you know, for, uh, for hot forging is that they maintain a high hardness at a very high heat. So, you know, and I think that's probably uh, not, it's not via carbon only, it's actually through the addition of alloys and I think mainly chromium. So, uh, you know, and that's what also makes it very hard to hand forge. So, but yeah, I'm gonna use this piece. This piece, like I said, is an Austrian piece of uh, D2, and it's supposed to be uh, a very high quality piece, and it's supposed to be very good for uh, for knives. So, yeah, I'll put that in the forge right now, and then we'll see what happens. Also, you see this thing kind of floating in the breeze here. I, I should probably make that more static in, in order to reduce the glare. I just hung this cloth, like, right, this is actually kind of like a greenhouse cloth right behind me, but. I need to secure that down so it doesn't fly all over the place. So, yeah, and then uh, as far as the dies are concerned, um, I, uh, I worked them down a little bit more, you know, to make the opening on this end a little bit wider. But actually, the more I was thinking about it, the more I thought even if it bottomed out on this end first, it shouldn't make too much of a difference because, you know, eventually that material, even if it's too, if your material is too thick for this space, it'll also get squeezed down some. But the thing is, you don't want to get it squeezed down too much. You know, you have to have this angle on this here so that it'll create taper. So, yeah, well, let's, uh, yeah, let me get this in the forge and I'm gonna create a tang first and I'm gonna make this more like in a, I guess, more of a chevette style because I'm, I'm, I used to be okay at it, but I'm not very good at sharpening knives or, or uh, blades. So I'm gonna make this a very short shavette style. Plus, I'm not a very big guy, you know, so I don't have a lot of face to cover for shaving. So, yeah, let me get it in the forge. to stop it's just once it cools to a certain point you can it feels like you're hitting on a piece of granite to get 
get the tang to maybe bend up a little bit. I don't know, I just always see on straight razors, this always, the tang always seems to curve upward a little bit. And that might have to, something, might have something to do with the ergonomics of, you know, leaving the blade enough space away from where the tang is so you can hit your face at different angles, I guess. So. going to do is a is uh, on the very tang end maybe just form a uh, you know fuller it a little bit and I might actually punch a hole or drill a hole on that end so I can you know for hanging this up I'm not gonna you know I'm just making this a straight razor a, a, just a straight razor with no I don't know what they call it scales or hand you know whatever the handle thing is that they make this you know how they make these uh, these razors so yeah. anyway you'll see I think it's designated as shock resistant, whereas H13 is heat resistant, but they, they share a lot of similar properties, and I think it's just a matter of a different amounts of, of alloys that give it, uh, you know, one, as you know, make it better for one aspect than for another. Thank <laughs> you. 
where I need the right tongue to hold this thing on edge like this. So when I hold it to, you know, make that bend this way, it doesn't want to slip upwards. So I promise I will make myself a full array of tongs. And I mentioned this to someone in the comments is that, um, you know, after making YouTube videos, I noticed that my own tongue selection is completely inadequate. And previously, you know, I'm always working on the same tools I make for customers, so I have the tongs I need to make those things. But, uh, you know, as these videos progress along here and I'm just monkeying around, working on different projects, you know, I find that uh, my tongs are, are lacking. So, but uh, yeah, I'll get on it. Almost forgot. I want to put my uh, GS mark on this on the uh, the uh, handle end first. Add on. This is hard. I got to even use this twice. direction uh, to how it would normally be formed when I'm working it uh, on the uh, on the guillotine tool with the, the hollow bevel dies just to compensate so it doesn't curve upwards too much you know it'll curve basically if this is the blade's edge down here I'm going to curve it this way a little bit and then so when I work it on that it'll bend it back upwards the spline will start to curve upwards but it'll become at the end relatively straight though I do want it to have some curve but not, not extreme like you saw in, uh, in the last video. So. straighten it back out and then actually put in a little bit of curve this way you know this is this being the, the, uh, the blade end so yeah let's get on it I want to thank I really <clears throat> want to uh, thank all the guys in the comments on the last video for making that point so many guys who are, who are blade guys made that point and uh, you know uh, you know I kind of was scratching my head about how, how can you go about that to, you know, make your blade wind up to be straight or near, near, nearly straight. And, you know, so many good comments. So really appreciate that, guys. Seems to me like this cloth is doing a pretty good job. You see, if I, if I, you know, move it away, you see a lot more glare. So, you know, when it's not floating around, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. slow on the go, but you can see I've already formed that Ricasso area right there, and I'll work work that, you know, from the back front. And then I'm, I'm curious to see now how it's going to straighten itself out, which I'm sure it will, but, uh, you know, sometimes you have to try something to see how it actually works. You know, I was explaining to some other people in, in the comments as well is that you know, having theory on, on how steel moves when it's in a plastic state is one thing, but how it actually moves, uh, you know, when in practice can sometimes be different. It can sometimes surprise you. So, um, you know, the more experience you have, the less element of surprise there is. But, you know, still, 
even for experienced blacksmiths, sometimes you know you're not exactly sure how the steel will behave, and there's a lot of different factors that uh, that actually influence that. Okay, it's about time to pull her out again. I think I'll work that spot one more time. See it already. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how already how it's starting to push itself downward. Move this camera up a little bit so you can see a little bit better then. as thin as possible because this steel is super hard, D2. So another thing too is uh, um, about the heat treatment of this steel. Um, you know, what I'm planning to do is I'm just going to, you know, once it's formed out, I'm just going to heat it one more time to critical temperature, hold it there for about a minute, pull it out, and just let it air cool. You know, if, if you were to try to quench this steel at too high of a temperature, it would crack. So, you know, it's, it's, it's air hardening steel, so, you know, if, it, if you allow it to air cool, it'll, uh, it'll uh, you know, attain a, a good hardness. You know, there's probably other ways to make it even harder. You know, you might be able to quench it after, you know, at a certain lower temperature, but the most success I've ever had with these kinds of steels is just doing exactly that. Just very, very simple. This should, uh, this should be the last heat, uh, and then what I'll do is, um, you know, I'm going to clean it up a bit. I'll probably, you know, use my angle grinder on this harder steel, and uh, and then I'll, you know, I'll clean it, and then I'll let you see it. But I probably, I'm not definitely not going to do a final sharpening for this video or uh, using of this of this razor if I can actually use it. I'll, I'll probably put that in another video because my videos tend to get very very long. You know, I like to keep the videos in, in basically real time and a lot of guys have expressed that they like that and you know I, I think that's good because it gets it lets you see the basically the whole process you know and the time it takes to, to work on on a certain piece. So yeah let me finish out this last thing. curve in it now, so I guess I, you know, I should have put in more curve than I initially thought, you know, more up curve in the opposite direction, but it's definitely less than in the first runs in the last video, so, and it, you know, it has a little bit of uh, waviness, so I'll have to work that out, but, you know, it's, to me, it's pretty thin, you know, I'll, I'll show it to you a little bit later, it's got that little nub on the end from when I put that, that pre-curve in, so I'll get rid of that, but, yeah. It's definitely hollow, it's definitely got taper, it's definitely pretty straight. So, yeah, that's that for the forging. So this is the heat treating, just letting it soak. Soaked already for about a minute past critical temperature. So, about an orange, pull her out, set her down. 
let it cool. And that's that. Okay, so here it is. You can see, uh, I don't know if you can come in there and see my initials on there. And then also you can see that it's curved itself back this way. You know, it's got waviness here. You know, the only thing I don't like is you see this one spot right in here. It's kind of got a dip. So I'll have to, you know, get that all even. So that'll, you know, I'll, I'll have, to, it'll make it a little bit thicker, a little bit more cold work. But, you know, as it stands, it's got a nice taper. It's got that nice hollow, that hollow bevel. And then, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it, uh, to get it sharp. But I mean, like I said, I'm not really too good at sharpening blades, but, you know, I'll do my best. You know, in the past, I always use the, uh, uh, I read in a woodworking magazine years ago about the scary sharp technique using uh, a piece of plate glass with uh, with wet sandpaper and you know in in different grits to get a, uh, a really sharp edge and that used to work super well for me for uh, for uh, chisels so I might employ that method you know we'll see how it goes so and then you can see you know the amount of curve in this is much less when compared this is the uh, trial piece from last video you know, where I didn't do any pre-curving in the opposite direction. So you can see the difference is pretty pronounced. So what I want to do right now quickly is I'll just take a file to this and see how it feels. Oh yeah, it's like glass. It's absolutely glass. Yeah. So definitely should be hard enough edge. So what I'll do is, uh, very quickly, I'll just use my angle grinder just a little bit to smooth that out, and then I'll I'll go on to uh, uh, to the bench grinder with a flat wheel. So, but just very quickly here, just so you can see. just very quickly there and then now I'll move on like I said to the uh, bench grinder with a flat wheel and I'll wire wheel this and get it all cleaned up and then let you see how it looks Okay, here it is. Uh, it's, you know, I've got still miles and miles to go in sharpening this, but you know, you can see a little bit better here, maybe at this angle, see the taper, and then the hollow bevel, and uh, yeah, I just polished it up, cleaned it up a little bit so you guys can see. I just literally, probably for 10 minutes, I just hit it with the angle grinder, and then with a uh, flap wheel on a bench grinder, and then just uh, wire wheeled it. and. and buffed it just a little bit so it'll come out better uh, so you can see it a little bit easier in the video here. So yeah, I think, you know, if if I can attain a sharp enough edge, I'll give it a go and I'll even put that on camera. You know, I just felt like I, I was a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit skeptical about using a straight razor because I probably, you know, I like the Three Stooges so much and I, I've probably seen too many 
episodes where Mo is shaving Carly, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, and this is dull, so, and he's got it like, hey, you know, up against his nose and like, on his eyebrow, so, yeah, but I, I, I definitely, you gotta give me time, because I probably get, get some different abrasives, and I gotta take my time to get this, you know, obviously razor sharp, and if I can't get it razor sharp, I'll take it to a guy who can, so, and then uh, give it a go. Yeah, I had a lot of fun on this project, and this is something I, I hope I can use. So, maybe no more disposable razors. Very green and earth-friendly. And before I sign off, I wanted to uh, give a big shout-out to Tom Klein. Thank you for the donation, sir, and uh, keep coming back. Everyone, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my website, gstongs.com.